Last uh, week we started a little sermon series looking at the life of Moses. Not all of his life, but what I just uh, probably the first bit. Um, so it may appear up there, but that's all right. We'll get there eventually. So it's Moses part two, creative. I thought yes. <laughs> Moses. Moses was forced into exile from Egypt, having been observed in the act of striking and killing an Egyptian taskmaster, he then travelled to the land of Midian. So that's where we're going to pick up the story today. Let's pray, let's open our hearts, let's receive what God wants to say to us this morning. Father God, I thank you that we can just pause for a moment now and just hear from you. Lord God, we just want to take a moment to look at the life of Moses. What you want to say to us individually, what you want to say to us as a church community here in this place. As we walk the roads of life, help us to discover more about you, help us to discover more about ourselves. Help the Moses to speak into our life today as his story continues to unfold. In Jesus' name, Amen. So it's Exodus chapter 2, is where we're starting. It's verse 11 through to 15, and so you can read along or listen to me or however you want to do that. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labour. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Looking this way and that and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrew men fighting. He asked the one in the wrong why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, What I must have done became known. What I did became known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now Moses assumes the life of a shepherd. He married, had several children. Moses' life was going quite well and comfortable and relaxed. He grew old in, the, in this land. Old age was good to Moses. He retired, he had good health and vigour. He's now at the age of 80. And Moses says to himself, hey, my life is good. I'm satisfied. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. However, God had another plan. God unexpectedly interrupted Moses' life in chapter 3, verse 1 and following. Now Moses, who was a shepherd, was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, as we would no doubt, I'll go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he got over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses said, Here I am. Verse 5. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. 
At this Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hovitites and Jebusites. And don't we love them people? <laughs> Verse 9. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you. That I have sent you and when you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Quite a bit going on, a big chunk of scripture. If you know the story of Moses, maybe some of that's familiar. Maybe some of that's, oh, okay, that's surprising. So one day our mate Moses, he's tending the sheep at the foot of this mountain. He looks over in the distance, sees the burning bush. There's fire happening, but the bush isn't burning up. Didn't go out. It's not consumed. It's simply on fire. So, so Moses decides, hey, I'm going to go and check out this strange sight. And from that step and from that moment... His life was radically transformed by that one decision. Right there, as he took a step closer, as he went to investigate, his life would forevermore be changed. Have you ever made a quick decision that significantly reorientated, changed, moved, Stopped something, started something. Have you ever made a decision that has radically changed your life from that point? As he approached the bush, Moses heard his name being called. No doubt, quite surprising. Burning bushes don't normally talk, burning bushes actually burn up. Moses, Moses. Right away, no doubt, Moses probably assumed that he was in trouble. Oh dear, what have I done? Oh dear, what's going on? But the voice continues to talk and, and says, Remove your sandals from your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground. And we can be quite assured that he quickly whipped off those sandals. But slowly as the conversation unfolds, our mate Moses realises that this must be gone. There's no evidence in Scripture to suggest that Moses was particularly religious up to this point. But no doubt he's thinking this must be the God of my people. The God of my family. Childhood stories, memories probably flooded back. Moses fell to his knees. God continues his message. It's Exodus 3, verse 7. I've observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry on the account of the taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering. And as Moses stands there, He's listening, he's remembering, he's picturing those images of the hardship his people have suffered. 
trampling clay in the mud pits, making bricks, whips cracking, beatings, starvation, hardship. No doubt these images are flooding back. If Moses had dared, maybe he would have said, well, God, it's about time. I'm glad you've shown up. I'm glad you're going to sort it out. Because my people had suffered enough. But these words, these words that God spoke, remind us, encourage us, God heard their cry. God saw their hurt. He knows their pain. God has a special ear for the oppressed, the forgotten. God knows the aching heart of every human. This is the good news of Exodus, that God hears our cry. God knows your fears. God knows your times of emptiness and loneliness. God knows the hidden secrets. God heard their cry. And God sees and hears our cry today. Anyone been watching SAS Australia, Channel 7? Good, just me. <laughs> They are stripped back. Oh, and my family, and, and many others. These people go through the SAS course. They are stripped back physically, mentally, emotionally, emotionally. They're put in vulnerable situations to test them and to try them and to see what they're made of. At this point, the real measure and impact becomes clear in this story. God is offering an observation. God is offering a way out. Yes, I've seen the hardship. I've seen the distress. I've heard their cry. It's not what I'm going to do, Moses. But rather... I'm calling you to go. Go to fear. Me, Lord? Yes, you, Moses. I'm sending you to confront this problem and to speak a strong word to Moses to lead my children out of Egypt. It's you! Uh, just, just a minute. You want me to lead my people out of Egypt and across the desert? God always has the best plan, doesn't he? Guess what? It usually involves us. We love it up to a point, don't we? <laughs> you will go. You will speak. You will lead. You will be my hands and feet. You will be my church. You'll be my witnesses to a lost and dying world. I want you to go. Go, for it's about people, the forgotten, the oppressed, the overlooked. Go to them and set them free. Have you ever carried on a lively debate with God? Be honest. Have you ever tried to change God's mind on something? I like to call it the yes, but approach. And Moses is a champion at the yes, but approach. Anytime we feel cold or compelled to do something we would rather not do, we're tempted with the yes, but. On the screen there, Exodus 3.11. First, Moses asks a very simple question. But who am I? My goodness, I'm 80 years old that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Hey, I'm enjoying my life. God simply says, I'll be with you, Moses. 
God does not acknowledge Moses' argument, neither does God acknowledge Moses' age or stage in life. God simply calls. He just simply calls. Moses suggests a second argument. He asks God his name. I'm just wondering, if I go and they ask me about you, who shall I say sent me? Exodus 3.14. One of the most mysterious and marvellous statements in the Bible. God says, I am who I am. Therefore, Moses is to tell the people that I am has sent him. But Moses is relentless. He offers his next yes but to God. Emotions are running high. Moses is trembling at this thought. I'm not going to be able to avoid this, no doubt. He's thinking... And he says in Exodus 4.10, Oh Lord, Lord, um, I'm no good at talking. I'm not eloquent in speech. I'm, I'm slow in speech and slow of tongue. I'm not the right man for the job. Moses tries a new tact. I mumble a lot, Lord. I can't think fast on my feet. I don't always use good grammar. I'm not confident in speaking. I'm fine with sheep, but not people. Anyone? Anyone find the sheep? Cat, dog, but not people? You don't want to stand here? Okay. See, Ron, if you want to be on the communion roster? Maybe you'd rather mow a lawn. I'm not good at speaking. Finally, in a ball of sweat and panic, Oh Lord, please send someone else. You don't really want me to go to Egypt. And then Exodus 4, 14 and 15. The Lord's anger burned against Moses. I hear frustration in God's voice when I read these couple of verses. I don't know about you. Maybe it's just my sense of humor. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he'll be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. Hey Moses, old mate, no more objections. Moses, just go. Last Sunday, Joan asked me, what happened to Aaron? Where was he? Why wasn't he in the bulrushes or whatever? And, uh, Aaron was older than Moses, for those of you who were wondering. Yes. Aaron, Moses, Miriam. Aaron, Miriam, Moses. Yeah, that was good. Yes. Yeah. Someone said that faith is most simply waiting for the rest of the story to unfold. Someone has said, faith is simply waiting for the rest of the story to unfold. And I like that. Take a step. Follow God. Listen to Him. Yes, it will be challenging. Yes, it will be hard. But we faithfully go. You may be called. You may even have had an epiphany, a light bulb moment. God may have interrupted your day, your life, your schedule. You might have even said, yes, God, but uh, here's my uh, requirements. A few times. However, friends, in the end, You'll find yourself saying, I pray, okay, Lord. Okay, here I am. I've heard your call. Use me, send me. Lead me where I will be most effective for you. Because in the end, God knows best. Help me set my people free. And God says to you, and God says to me, come on. 
Let's go. God bless you. Amen. Let's go.